What's up guys, I'm Andy from 1A Auto. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the radiator on this 2015 Jeep Wrangler. If you need this part or other parts for your vehicle, click the link in the description and head over to 1AAuto.com. Take this cover off, just grab underneath, lift up, slide it forward. I'm gonna take a straight blade screwdriver, just loosen up these worm clamps, one right here. And then one right here on the throttle body. I'm gonna take a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet, take these two bolts out. Just remove this hose right here. This is gonna be loose. Disconnect it right here. Just slide it out. Right there. And there's a connector right here. We wanna disconnect that connector. Just slide this off. I'm gonna take the cap off the radiator. Then we wanna drain the coolant. I'm gonna raise the vehicle up. We're using a two post lift. If you're doing this at your house, you can use a jack and jack stands. I'm gonna pull this panel off. I'm just gonna use this trim tool. Take all these retainers out. There's two clips on the inside that hold these brackets on that are similar to those ones. You just have to take those out as well. go and just slide it down just like that at this point we're going to get a drain bucket we're going to open up the drain on the bottom of the radiator it's right there so place the drain bucket underneath there and we can loosen this up right here I'm just going to use some needle nose pliers and twist this Starting to move, it's starting to drip. That's good. There we go. I'm gonna pull this top of the air box off. Just pull this hose off first, right there. And then there's some clips. Unclip it, right there and right there. Pull this off, pull the air filter off, set it aside. Just grab the air box, the lower part, and lift up. It should pull out. Some tabs that hold it on in the bottom. Make sure those little grommets stayed in there. Just gonna disconnect this hose right here. Just grab it, twist. Take this trim tool, there's a little clip right here, a little push retainer, push down, slide that retainer out, and we can grab the reservoir, just slide it up. Pull it up. Disconnect this connector right here. Just push down on the tab, slide it off. Take a trim tool. We're gonna pull these retainers out. Just like that. Then 
working with those retainers out. Just slide this off. Slide that out of the way. I'm gonna use a eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. I'm gonna take this bolt out here and the same on the other side over there. Now I can grab this fan assembly, just slide it up, pull it up. Use a trim tool, just remove this wire that's clipped into the radiator. Just slide it out. Sometimes they break like that. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna disconnect the hoses. I'll just use this hose clamp tool. We actually sell this at oneauto.com. All right, and then squeeze it. Grab the lower radiator hose and twist it off. Some of the coolant might be in the hose still. Make sure your drain bucket's below it. I'll take the tool off this hose clamp. I'm gonna do the same with this hose clamp over here. Now we're gonna pull these clips out. There's three on this side, three on this side. I'll just use a trim tool, get underneath the clip. That out, do the same with the other ones. With that loose up top, just grab with two hands and just pull straight forward. Be careful, the, these little lights are still connected. All right, now to remove this, I'm just gonna take the whole socket out. It's a little bit easier to untwist that. There's a little lock there. You have to move the lock to disconnect the connector. Set those aside. Same with this side. Take that off. And there's the grill. All right, I wanna take these two bolts out of this cooler. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. Make sure you don't take this one off because that goes to the cooler lines. Now we wanna take this bolt out on the other side of the cooler. This is a eight millimeter socket with a ratchet and an extension. Pull that off. You can grab the cooler and just slide it forward a little bit. Next there's a bolt right here and one up here. I'm gonna take those two top ones out first. I'm gonna use an eight millimeter socket extension and a ratchet. You might have to use a swivel when you get in here. It's a little bit tight. Pull that off. There's two more bolts underneath here. It's kind of hard to get to. You get a small eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. You're gonna go underneath here. And if you can use an extension with a swabble head, wobble head, um, you can probably get these off that way. Take these two out. So actually to gain access at that bolt, it's a little bit easier if you take a pry bar pry up on this and slide this back. Then you can access that bolt a lot easier. I'm gonna try it on this side as well. Let's raise it up. Just 
pry this back a little bit. You just have to access that bolt. There we go. Just get that on there. Take this last bolt out on the front. There we go. That's loose. All right. Uh, the last is a bolt over here on the side. Use a eight millimeter socket right here. Take this bolt out. All right, uh, bolts out. There's some wires right here. That is a retainer attached to the radiator, so we gotta take those off. Just use a trim tool. Pop those out, just like that. need to take these retainers out. Just use a trim tool. Get underneath here. There we go. Pop those out. Same on this side. Pop these out. one more bolt I need to get. It's over on the side here that connects those cooler lines. Just use an eight millimeter socket, long extension and a ratchet. Loosen that up, take that bolt off. Should be able to separate this. Those lines are, there's a clip that holds those lines on a little bit. So just push those to the side. like that. There you go. Here's the old radiator. Here's the new radiator from 1AAuto.com. As you can see, the shape is the same, has the same connection points. The upper radiator hose connection at the top, it's the same. Same brackets to hang it. Get yours at 1AAuto.com and you can do it yourself. So I want to transfer over these rubber pieces. Just slide this off like this. It's going to go in the new one. Just like that. And same with the other side. Now we'll just take the radiator, slide it in position. This might be a little bit tricky. Pull the content condenser out of your way a little bit. And I'm going to try to attach it to the condenser first, at least get it started. Get this lined up. Take this bolt. Get the 
this one started up top here. Now I'm going to get this one started as well. Just so everything's lined up when it goes back in. Okay, those two are started. Just be careful not to stab the condenser with these lines. Let's see if I can get it. the bottom one started with this out of the way. get this bottom bolt started. And same with this one. This one's probably the hard one, hardest one to get to. Not much room in there. the ratchet wrench. Now that those four are in, then I'm just going to snug this one up and then I'll snug the other three up. This one, this one I'm going to have to use the ratchet wrench. Makes it a lot easier. All this is in this position. It's easier to install this condenser bracket bolt right here. We'll snug this bolt down. All right, so now I want this to line up with where the bracket goes into the holes. Right there, right there. This cooler is gonna have to get raised up a little bit. So now I'm gonna take this cooler. Some, some of you may not have this cooler. This might be just specific models. So I'll get those bolts started right there. Those bolts were caged bolts, so they didn't come out. So just get those started. And then take this bolt over here and get this one started. And before I tighten those down, I have to put that bracket on the lines down below. Just take this bracket. It's going to slide over on the side here. just holds the lines in position. With that bracket lined up, just take the bolt.
get that started. Take my extension and a ratchet and a eight millimeter socket. I'll tighten this bolt up. That bracket falls a little bit, just line it up again. All right, that's good. All right, so now I'll take an eight millimeter socket, tighten this one down. Then use a 10 millimeter socket and tighten these two bolts down. All right, that's good. Then these two flaps, we need to re-secure these, push the push pins in right here. Now we're gonna put these bolts in right here. And then one on the other side up right here. Got a 10 millimeter socket, extension and ratchet. Tighten these down. Tighten this one down as well. Now I'm gonna reconnect the hose, the hoses. Use the hose clamp tool. Squeeze the hose clamps. Slide this one on. Put the hose clamp on. If this is badly rusted, then you're gonna to wanna to replace it. You can use a worm clamp. And same with the bottom one. Squeeze that one. And line this up. And release it. Take the fan. Slide this in position. There's some feet down below. It slides into, make sure it's in those feet on both sides. So that's good. And we can put the bolts back in. Now we'll take these bolts, get these started. Take an eight, eight millimeter socket and a ratchet. Before I tighten that one down, get the other one started. Snug these down. All right. All right, now we're gonna connect this connector right here. Lock it in place. Now we're gonna line this grill up. First, I'm gonna put these lights back in. that in like that, do the same with the other side. Or if you disconnected them at the connector, plug those back in. Line these tabs up on the bottom. And just push this on. Take this 
push pins, push these back in. This cover is going to go over here. It's going to slide underneath there. Slide underneath there. Line these push pins up. Lock them in place. Take the coolant reservoir. There's a little tab that it's going to slide into. So on the back side right here, it's going to slide on the hole where the fan shroud is. Line that up like that. And take this hose and we'll put that on the top of the radiator. And we're just going to push this push retainer back in. Line that up, lock it in place. All right, before I put this snorkel on, I want to add coolant, but I can access the bleeder. There's a bleeder actually on this thermostat housing right here. You can take a straight blade screwdriver, just loosen it up. Once you get it a little bit loose, you should be able to do it by hand. Loosen that up. And that's going to make bleeding the coolant system a little bit easier. The coolant's going to be able to go down into the radiator and then come through the engine and back up through the bleeder. All right. You're going to want to make sure you use the correct coolant for the vehicle. As I'm pouring this in, you can actually hear the air coming out of the bleeder. We want to add it. Once we start seeing coolant come out of there, then we can close it up. And there we go. See some air bubbles are coming out. That's pretty good. So we'll close it up. Just take the screwdriver and just close it a little bit more. Right about where it was, that's good. All right, we'll take this air box. Want to make sure those tabs line up with those grommets. Then we'll just push it down, lock it in place. Take the air filter, put that on, and take the upper air box. We're going to install this hose. That lined up, and we can lock it in place. Put this snorkel on, connect this temperature intake temperature sensor, lock it in place. Slide it in position. Oh, the two bolts right here. Just get those to line up. As long as these are on properly, then I'll tighten these two down. Just use a 10 millimeter socket and a ratchet. And then we'll slide this hose in position. This goes over to the coolant reservoir. I'm gonna tighten up these two worm clamps. Just use a straight blade screwdriver, tighten them up. Good. That one's good. Take this engine cover, 
slide it in position. And push it down. Now we're gonna reinstall this lower shield. Make sure you put the push pins on the back side where these go on in the back. And then these four in the front. All right, with this all back together, I'm gonna to add some more coolant to this. Then I'm gonna let the car run. I'm gonna run it for about 10 minutes, constantly monitoring the coolant level, making sure that it's not overflowing, and constantly monitoring the coolant temperature on the vehicle. You, want it, you do not want it to overheat. And once that's all set, I can shut the vehicle down for a while, let it cool down, recheck the level, and then take it for a road test. All right. Now I'm just going to start the car up. So it's always a good idea to put the heat on and put it on hot and just constantly check it. And make sure that you actually get heat. If you're not getting heat, there's probably not enough coolant in the system and just make sure you have enough coolant. All right, we also want to check this upper radiator hose. Be careful when you go to touch it. It might be hot. Um, right now it's not too bad. So I know the thermostat hasn't opened yet. If the thermostat opens, it's gonna be hot enough that you can't hold on to it for too long. But right now, it's still not hot. I'm starting to feel it a little bit, but not yet. All right, so the thermostat opened up. This hose is nice and hot. It, you can't touch it for too long. We let it run for about another five minutes. At this point, I'm just gonna shut it off. I'm gonna leave the funnel on, and it's gonna suck the rest of this coolant in, and we'll just top it off a little bit more and you should be good to go. All right, so now our engine's cooled down. The coolant has stabilized. I can put this plug in this funnel. We actually sell this funnel at 1AAuto.com. So take this off. Make sure it's nice and full right there at the radiator. Then I can take the cap, install the cap. And at this point, you're gonna wanna check the overflow tank and make sure the level's up where it needs to be. Ours looks good, so we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Visit 1AAuto.com, your place for DIY auto repairs, for great parts, great service, and more content.